Hello, my name is Dr. Marcia Braden. Today, I'll be talking about the cognitive profile of those with Fragile X syndrome. The summary of cognitive research varies, but is extensive to a great extent. There are strengths in vocabulary. This has been researched a number of ways by a number of researchers. You know this because they have this vocabulary that they use in context and do very well talking with you. They also have long-term memory for meaningful and learned information. That's why we tend to use a lot of high interest materials so that they will in fact remember that information. We also know that they do very well with face, emotion, perception, and recognition. They relate relate well to their parents and caregivers. They're a group of individuals who have a strong social connection with those around them. The weaknesses, however, are in attentional control. They have lots of difficulty paying attention to stimuli, especially when they're not interested in it. We should also note that any time that you use verbal instruction, they oftentimes will not be able to attend to that. Their linguistic processing has been researched many times. A number of individuals have pointed out the fact that it's very hard for them to process a lot of verbal information and understand it without visual supports. Their visual spatial cognition is impaired and especially prevalent in the females with Fragile X syndrome. And that means that oftentimes they get lost, they, they have to rely on their GPS, and they have other issues with finding their way. So they also have a lot of visual motor impairments, like tasks that require writing or drawing. And we know that many of the males with Fragile X syndrome love to draw, love to write, and yet they're impaired. And it's very difficult for them to look around the room and watch other individuals writing, writing their names, taking notes, and not being able to do what the other peers can do. The individuals with Fragile X syndrome do get embarrassed and get frustrated trying to engage in vis visual motor tasks. The impairment in the tasks that requires that coordination has been looked at too. So it's not only the writing, it's actually using a pegboard, doing fine motor activities that are difficult for them as well. We also know, and this is a really important point, that the biological piece of these individuals, meaning the amount of protein that they produce or don't produce, and the environmental factors predict the outcome. We have a number of parents who often ask, if my child has a full mutation and he's not producing any of the protein, will that indicate that he's very impaired, that he'll never be able to learn to read or never be able to learn? And what we know from this piece and evidence of research is that not only the biological uh, protein and lack of protein produced affects the individuals and the outcome, but the environment as well. And that then compels us all as therapists, parents, and educators to provide the kind of environment that will in fact help these individuals grow. The FMRP depletion is strongly correlated with low IQ scores in the males. Again, this was researched by a group of individuals in 2003. We also know that that depletion was related to slow processing speed, short-term memory, and attentional dysregulation. These pieces of research are critical to those of us who are therapists and teachers because although we have observed these weaknesses in terms of this population, we now have translational evidence through the research to show us that whatever we've observed is accurate. And it also then propels us to create more strategies that can be helpful to these individuals in overcoming some of the obstacles. The cognitive phenotype in IQ of males with Fragile X is taken from a long, 
older study, but it's very, very insightful. Melinda Kemper, in 1988, took a group of individuals with Fragile X syndrome, males, a number of them being 20, and their ages were 4 to 12 years old. She used an instrument called the Kaufman ABC. That particular IQ test gave us the information that's presented before you on the screen. Very interesting findings in that the Fragile X group as compared with the peer group and the control group, was lower overall in terms of their measure of IQ. But more interesting was their ability, their achievement score, being higher than the control group. And also that there was more variation across the subtests, meaning they didn't have a flat line profile, but they had some strengths and they had some weaknesses We asked, why would that achievement score be higher? Because we know, those of us who are psychologists and who have studied cognition, know that IQ typically predicts the ability to achieve, the ability to learn, the ability to read and write. But we do know that this group oftentimes has difficulty with novel tasks. And so to protect the integrity of an IQ test, we often use novel tasks. When they were presented with those IQ questions and those tasks, which were novel, they did less well. We've learned that that is significant because in order for them to learn something new, we need to pair it with something that's familiar. So the achievement score was higher because they'd been taught different skills in school, and that was part of the achievement subtests. We also found out that they process information better simultaneous, meaning that they get the whole before they get the parts. And so the fourth finding here you see, Fragile X syndrome, the simultaneous score, the mean score of 71, was higher than the sequential score of 62. That has major implications for teaching because many of the curricula that we use with individuals when we're teaching them to read or to do math is based on a sequential model. So phonics, we teach the sound and then we go forward with the next sound and the next sound in a sequence until children learn to read a word. In the case of those with Fragile X syndrome, especially the males, we know that that's not the best strategy because that really is their weak area. So instead, we want to teach whole word reading. We want to teach the whole, the simultaneous whole, the gestalt. This kind of shows you exactly what we mean by the difference between the sequential and the simultaneous processing that Dr. Kemper found in her early research. If we look at sequential and simultaneous, this visual shows you a little better and gives you a better idea of what sequential processing is as compared to simultaneous processing. And so the sequential learner will learn the A and then the B and then the C and then the D as parts to a whole. However, Those individuals with Fragile X syndrome have a strength that's simultaneous, meaning they see A, B, C, D as a whole. And that leads us to understand why whole word reading and sight reading they do much better with because they can learn better using the whole to parts. Simultaneous processing, then again, is gestalt-like configuration. It's that global conception that is there when you present information. It's the intuitive method of organizing. Again, they gain their information from a number of stimuli, and they also process multiple stimuli, meaning that there is this area of learning that comes to them in a very intuitive and global way. So in order to build on those cognitive strengths, we need to identify them and then start to use some of those curricular advances 
that really utilize and depend on those strengths. We want to use long-term memory. We want to use that associative learning because they oftentimes will remember things once they're shown a picture or they remember an event based on a person that they've had contact with. That associative learning also helps with the indirect instruction. We know that oftentimes they have this indirect understanding of what's going on, and it may even look as though they're not paying attention to the instruction, but later when they're asked about the instruction are able to tell you all about it. They also respond very well to visuals and visual cues. Their strengths in visual memory are important to remember when you're structuring your classroom or when you're structuring the home environment. We also know that there are weaknesses in focus and concentration. A lot of times children with Fragile X Syndrome are medicated for ADHD and some of the focus and concentration deficits. The girls are more likely to have the focus and concentration deficits and the boys more hyperactive and impulsive. The executive functioning deficits are prevalent in both males and females with Fragile X Syndrome. This impairs their ability to formulate a plan and execute it. So before beginning a task, they oftentimes will need us to start the task for them and let them finish it because that will then enable them to utilize some of the executive functioning skills that they do have. They also have very inconsistent reaction to stimuli So again, we talk so much about sensory deficits. We talk about sensory integration dysfunction. And that's because their ability to regulate what comes into their system is often impaired and it's inconsistent. So in summary, we know that the cognitive profile tells us a lot about how these individuals learn and how to parent them and create the best environment at home. We know they learn globally. They learn in the gestalt format. We know that they're whole word readers and that they're better off learning to read with sight vocabulary and also high interest readers. We also know that they're visual learners, that they learn best when they're using photographs and pictures. The females are very good at masking their learning difficulties. And because they don't aggress, they don't show us outward signs of frustration, they oftentimes mask when they are very, very confused and frustrated. Math is a problem for both males and females normally because it's a sequential skill. Math is something that you teach from one to the next and the next, and you build on it. It's very hard to teach math globally. They are incidental learners. They pick up a lot from their environment, and they learn a lot incidentally. If you remember the cognitive profile, you will enable these individuals to be more productive and to enjoy learning.